This is the EcoFlow Delta II Max power station. With over two kilowatt hours of battery capacity and a 2.4 kilowatt output, it can run most appliances in your house for hours. I've seen a lot of these power stations featured on various van life and bushcraft channels, but I'm very excited to see how it holds up in a more tech focused household. They market this unit as a great alternative to gas powered generators with zero emissions and low noise, but I think where it really shines is its ability to harness solar power. More on that later. First, let's go over some specs. On the front of the machine, there's a large screen that displays charge percentage, power output, and power input, as well as hours remaining given the current load. There's also four USB-A ports, two of which are fast charge enabled, and two Type-C ports that can supply 100 watts. Below that is a button to turn the whole unit on and off. On the back of the unit, there are six AC ports two 12 volt barrel jacks, and a 12 volt automotive style outlet. Behind the small door here are the charging ports for the device itself, an AC in port, and two connectors for solar panels. There's also a breaker reset button here and a switch for fast or slow charging. On the side of the unit, there's two ports for attaching extra battery storage. EcoFlow sells these extra units for $16.99 Canadian and can boost the max capacity over 6 kilowatt hours. The batteries in this power station are rated to last over 10 years. The whole unit weighs in at just over 50 pounds and it's pretty easy to carry around thanks to its two large handles on either side. The EcoFlow Delta II Max comes in at $2,400 Canadian dollars, which is competitively priced with some of the DIY solar power station kits I've seen, but it's hassle-free, easily moved, and you don't have to do any wiring. The first thing I did after unboxing was set it up to charge using the supplied AC cable right from an outlet. Here you can see it's drawing just under 400 watts from the outlet on slow charging mode. When I switched it to fast charging mode, it jumped up to around 1700 watts before settling back down at 1200. Modern wiring in a house can supply 15 amps or about 1500 to 1800 watts safely. But since my house was built in the 70s, I'm not too optimistic about the wiring, so I'll try this unit in slow mode. On fast charge, estimated recharge time was one hour, and on slow charge, estimated recharge time was four hours, which ended up being relatively accurate. Once I had it fully charged, I hooked up my entire computer setup to the AC ports on the back. I wanted to get a good idea of how long this power station would last in this scenario. And to my surprise, I ended up getting almost two full days of normal computer usage, including about six hours of Helldivers 2. Now that this thing is out of juice, it's time to break out the 220 watt foldable solar panels that EcoFlow sent. It comes in a carrying case and the case doubles as a kickstand to hold the panels up. It also provides a nice shaded area to place the power station during charging. Each solar panel input port can handle 500 watts, so you could hook up four panels for a maximum of one kilowatts of solar power input. It's also worth mentioning that you can get an adapter to attach any third-party solar panel to the power station as well. Sunny days are few and far between in the Pacific Northwest at the tail end of the rainy season, but on this day I was able to harvest between 180 and 190 watts for a total of 6 hours. This charged the power station to about 32%. Now that we've stored some of the sun's energy, it's time to see how much 3D printing we can do with it. I plugged my printer directly into the AC ports on the back, and during heat up the printer pulled about 300 watts, and during printing it jumped between 50 and 300 watts. Most of the power draw here is going to be the heaters in the hot end and the bed maintaining the temperatures. We started off at 32%, and after printing a single bench heat we're left with about 22%. 
So doing a little math here means that it took about 200 watt hours to print this. With a full charge, you could get over 10 hours of print time. That's a little less than I was expecting, but it's still super cool that this was printed using only power harvested directly from the sun. Nearly all of the Earth's energy comes from the sun. Fossil fuels only exist because of the stored solar energy that ancient foliage provided to the ecosystem. Even the food energy that we consume on a daily basis started out as grass in a pasture for livestock, grains in a farmer's field, or vegetables in a garden. When we pay our electricity bill, we're simply paying someone for the act of harvesting and supplying that stored energy. Cutting out the middleman and investing in our own ways to harvest this energy means that we can control our carbon footprint and better our chances at handing down a greener planet to the next generation. Special thanks to EcoFlow for sending this unit over in exchange for an honest review. Click the link in the description below and use my code for an extra 5% off all EcoFlow products. Valid until April 30th. As always, thanks for watching and happy printing.